Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler. It's just me today. We're playing a solo war game. Ish. State of series game. Uh, so we are featuring y'all, as you can see, directly that way, as well as up here. Ottoman Sunset, designed by Darren Leveloff and published by Victory Point Games. This is, woo, eight. Eight years old or so. Um, second game that we have featured from the state. Uh, oh boy, I have butchered the name of the series every time on this. Uh, states of series. States of siege series. I'll try that again. We did uh, a Habsburg Eclipse uh, previously. Now we're playing uh, Ottoman Sunset. Now Ottoman Sunset can also be joined up with that game to be joined as one big game. You could play it uh, cooperatively. One player um, uh, plays the Ottoman, the other one plays the Habsburgs, uh, and you can combine them or you can just play it as a solo game as a big, big old uh, enjoyment for you and of yourself. So yeah, here we go. So the teach is going to be a little bit kind of like how I've been doing with these solo games, that it's going to be a teach as we go for the most part. I'm going to give a little bit of a uh, uh, background on the historical nature of the game and then kind of a layout as to what we're going to be doing and then the details of things as they come up. I think that's the best way to go about doing that. So if you all are ready, I'm ready. Let's get into it, shall we? All right. So Ottoman Sunset, uh, a standalone states of siege game, as mentioned previously. Player controls the young Turks, that's me, as they try to keep the Ottoman Empire alive amidst struggle, struggles of the Great War or World War I. After many years of being the quote-unquote sick man of Europe, by the late 19th century, the Ottoman Empire attempted to reform and modernize itself. Ironically, such attempts convinced re restive nationalities such as the Greeks, the Romanians, the Bulgarians, etc. to assert their independence and or to seek to expand their territory. This weakness caused other imperial powers to seize Ottoman territory, both formally and informally. By the outbreak of World War I, the Ottoman Empire was reduced to a core territory in Asia Minor, the Levant, the Hejaz, Mesopotamia, and a sliver of European territory. Its collapse led to the military political leadership in Turkey to take over under the guise of the Young Turks. When war in Europe broke out in 1914, the Ottoman Empire, pursuant to secret protocols, agreed to provide shelter to the fleeing German battleship Gobin, which was renamed Yavuz after joining the Ottoman Navy. After Britain refused to deliver newly ordered Turkish battleships, the Turco-German fleet bombarded Russian forts signaling the Ottoman Empire's entrance into World War I. The Ottoman Empire began with lofty strategic goals, but soon faced a hard slog, defending its core empire against far-flung British-led forces, Russian armies, and a Hashemite Arab revolt. Furthermore, ongoing campaigns on other fronts, such as those with Aust Austria against Romania in the east, against Italy on the Isonzo, and of course, the draining stalemate of the Western Front had a direct impact on events in this theater. Like Austria-Hungary, Austria -Hung wow, the Ottoman Empire needed direct German aid to keep it in the conflict. Despite victories at Kut and Gallipoli, by October 1918, the Turks had about had all that they could take and surrendered. Can you, me, us, lead the Ottomans in a great war and achieve victory where your historical counterparts have failed. All right, so here we go. All right, so what are we looking at? So on the main board here, we have Constantinople, which is uh, the, the capital of, uh, of the Ottoman Empire. So my goal is to fight back the invading hordes while also being able to allocate resources to battle some of these battles that are going to take place in far off theaters over here, as well as fight off the potential British invasion coming through the Narrows here. All right. 
So there are a total of six tracks out here. We have the Salonica front, which is this track. This actually starts off board over here. We also have the Caucasus front here coming into Constantinople, and all of these are coming into Constantinople. Then we have the Mesopotamia front, which this one starts on the board, as does the Caucasus front. Then we have kind of a conjoined front over here, which is the Sinai and the Arab fronts respectively. So the Sinai front actually goes here, but once it hits Damascus, both of these two will converge, well, in theory, hopefully not too much, uh, as they advance on Constantinople. Then there is the Gallipoli front, which starts off board as well. As I said, there is the Narrows down here, which the British may unless the Germans come to my aid, will try and run these narrows to try and beat me and take over and basically invade Constantinople by sea. So that's kind of what I'm doing, as well as trying to keep my the national will, the Turkish national will, uh, up. If it ever drops all the way down, that's bad. Um, yeah, I will automatically lose. If any of these tracks make it into Constantinople, I lose. The only way I can win is if I'm able to withstand all these cards. So there is a uh, early deck, then there is a midday and a dusk deck, respectively. Those will come into play, hopefully, provided I'm doing okay. Uh, they'll be added to the deck of cards. I have to make it through the entire deck of cards to be able to actually win. I would, I, would, uh, I would bet on the allies if I were a betting man, but we're going to give it our, uh, give it the old college try and see how it goes. Now, a couple things that I should point out. I am playing with a couple of the, uh, of the optional rules, and I want to look those up real quick to get them ready for you guys to, to mention exactly which ones they are. Um... We are going to be playing the flanking, uh, the Gaza Beersheba line, which is this little bit here, so that when it comes into play, I'll talk about it. We are also going to be playing with the uh, military intelligence uh, optional rule, which if uh, the intelligence ever comes out here into Turkey, it gives a plus one for any coup attempts as opposed to a plus two if it's in specific areas there. And I believe there is one other that I was going to play with. Let me take a look. Uh, ah, that was it. The Mustafa uh, Kemal. Um, that's these chits right here. He was the uh, best uh, Turkish military leader in the conflict. So at three points during the game, I'm going to be able to use those chits to add a plus one uh, DRM or, or dice roll modifier. But it has to be against this front first unless this is pushed all the way off or pushed all the way back, I should say. Um, let me make sure. Ah, yeah. If they're off the board, then they can be used only down here for the Arab front and the Sinai front as well. Those are the three adjustments that we're going to be playing for the game. Um, so how do you play the game? Well, the sequence of play is actually listed all right down here. So there's a headline phase. If you're familiar with the States of Siege series, this is going to sound uh, extremely uh, familiar to you. Uh, we'll do the headline phase, then the event resolution phase, then army movement, and then the action phase. Now I get to actually do stuff. I have a total of four options during my turn. I can launch offensives, i.e. try and push these chits back, which are going to be working their way forward during the army movement phase. I can also allocate resources, which are going to add to DRMs into various places out here to be able to help me in battles and such. The third thing is deploy the Intelligence Bureau. So if this chit is already out here on the board, I can adjust it around. That's unlikely to happen. And the last thing is deploy Narrow's defenses, which are going to be these markers down here into these areas here to be able to fight off the British invasion that's going possibly going to be coming uh, 
as the game advances. Hopefully not. Hopefully the Germans come to my aid, but we shall see how that goes. Then after the excuse me, after that, we have the uh, Kaiserschlacht phase when that comes in to play. So it will happen in one of the cards. When that happens, we're going to move that little marker down here, and then we have to continuously fight battles, which can be good and bad. Uh, and then the national will phase, see how we're doing here on the, uh, basically against these various tracks. Rinse and repeat and do it again and do that for every single card in the game. So it's a whole lot of repetition, but it should in theory go pretty quickly. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready. I think that's, uh, okay. Everyone's saying them. everything's a little bit off. Let me turn this down a little bit. All right, try that. See if that's a little bit better, all right, for the audio. And with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera up. I will bring the chat up as well. Have that down there. And we're going to have the uh, Tableau display up there in the top right corner because you guys don't actually need to see the chits in the meantime. So, but as we go through, the first thing we're going to do, flip over, I've already shuffled all these up so here we go so we have an event you can immediately place one minefield marker uh, for free if available awesome all right so one of the minefields here i can place either there or there we'll go ahead and place that right there now these do come with little stands you'll see the little notch cut out right there but since the overhead camera figure go ahead and lay them down um, so that is the headline phase and the event resolution you know what? One other thing that I do want to do is I want to go ahead and read the uh, historical flavor for these. So, in November 1914, after the bombardment of, oh boy, uh, Sedabayir uh, by the British Navy, the Turks began fortifying the vulnerable narrows against fleet action. The foundation of the Straits defenses was a series of 10 minefields containing a total of 370 mines. Unbeknownst to the Allies, on the night of March 8th, 1915, the Turkish mine layer Nur Nesret laid a, li a line of mines in Erinkoy Bay. I'm going to butcher a lot of these pronunciations, so I apologize ahead of time. So here we go. So first things first, the Arab front and the Caucasus front both advance one step. So you'll see that, and we always activate these top to bottom, left to right, as shown on the card itself. So the Arab front, well, it's not on the board, so we can skip that. However, the Caucasus front advances to Sarakamish, right there. All right. Hmm. All right. So that is the army movement phase. Now we go into the action phase. So you guys can see here that it says that we have two actions. You guys are all making me self-conscious about the ch uh, the. Uh, the microphone. You know what? Let me try something. I'll be right back. Hold on. All right. See if that sounds any better. All right. Let me know, guys. Okay. So we have, uh, we can allocate resources. Uh, we can... Deploy Narrows Defenses, which we kind of already got a bump up on, so I think we're okay on that. Launching Offensives, we really only have one that can, that can go. And so we have a total of, for that card, we have two actions. And it's plus one to all offensives versus Mesopotamia. Well, Mesopotamia didn't advance, so I don't need to bother with that. Our options are to push back the caucus front or to be able to lay out uh, some resources. And I think we're gonna go ahead and start. Mm, let me look at something real quick. I think we're gonna go ahead and place one resource in the Western theater. So that cost me two actions to do so. So that's it. That's. It's done. There is no Kaiser Schlott uh, phase. Kaiser Schlott phase. So then uh, national will adjustment. There's no victories. There's no defeats. 
Um, and these strategic site areas out here aren't controlled, so it doesn't move, it stays at zero, boom, done. All right, easy enough. All right, well, it's the best we're gonna do for today, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so now, the event, no event. So here we go, oh, that's a lot of words. Here we go, Bulgaria entered the war on behalf of the Central Powers in October 1915 lured by German provinces to restore the prior borders. Although uh, Bulgarian forces won victories against Serbia and Romania and occupied much of Macedonia, the war soon became unpopular due to economic hardship and dislike of fighting as allies with the Muslims against fellow Eastern Orthodox Christians. In September 1918, when a multinational allied force broke through on the Salonika front, the Bulgarians sued for peace. So this is Bulgaria joins the Central Powers. All right, I only get one action point on this one, but Mesopotamia and the Sinai both advance. So Mesopotamia advances there. Now the Sinai attempts to advance. All right, the reason I say attempts to advance is you'll notice that these two spaces right here on the board have uh, uh, water symbols. Well, this is the desert, and until the, uh, until the pipeline it, the Sinai pipeline is completed, um, it's really dry, and it's possible that they don't have enough water to be able to advance across the desert. So, what I need to do is I have to roll whatever number, if I roll a three or higher, which is their battle value here on the chit, they do not advance. So, come on, three or higher. That is not a good start. They advance to El Arish. All right. All right. So now I have one action point. Well, honestly, hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and try and push them back one, uh, just for the simple fact that make it harder for them to advance. Yeah, let's go for it. So I will try, I need to roll a three or higher to push the Sy uh, Murray in the Sinai front back. I am not doing well. That failed. That cost my what, one uh, point, and that's that. We Next card. Again, no national will change. No, nothing like that. All right, we have an event. Hey, this is awesome. Place the Intelligence Bureau of the East marker on the turkey box in the display. So we're going to do that first and foremost. So we have this. We'll come down into Turkey. We're going to flip this over to the one DRM side. All right, so because of one of the... Uh, one of the added rule or added rules or the uh, variance, if you will, that I'm playing is when that comes out, that gives a plus DRM against any coup attempts that are going to be there. Okay. As opposed to, it would be a plus two if it were in the right area for the coup attempts. So that works out. That was nice. I'm glad that came out early. That's going to be helpful. All right. So we have done so here. Then we advance the Mesopotamias and we get one action. But Intelligence Bureau of the East, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that in German, was established at the start of the war to prevent or promote nationalist agitation against the British Empire. Headed by archaeologist Baron Max von Oppenheim, the organization sent agents into India, India and Egypt in order to stir unrest and was also involved in subversive measures, uh, missions to Persia and Afghanistan. So we advance Mesopotamia one. Okay, now, now that's getting a little close. Uh, we get one action point. Yeah, I think we're going to make it really, really simple here. Um, sorry about that, Giovanni. 
Yeah, uh, that, that's what uh, I, I heard as well, uh, Consent, was that this is the third in the series. Um, this is the earliest one that I have, though, however. We're going to go ahead and go against uh, uh, Townshin uh, in Mesopotamia. We need to roll a three or higher to push him back. Make sure I'm doing that right. Check that. I need to roll higher than that, so I need a four or higher. We are not not doing well on our rolls so far. Um, that was a that was a big bucket of fail right there. All right. Well, um, they have not affected the will yet, so we go into the next round. All right. We have Enver to the front. Enver Pasha was one of the quote-unquote young Turks who took control of the Ottoman Empire through the Committee of Union and Progress. Insisting on taking personal command, Enver invaded the mountainous Caucasus region in the height of winter in December 1914. The result was a resounding defeat for Ottoman forces at the Battle of uh, Sarakamish, involving over 50,000 casualties. So the Caucasus and the Sinai both advance, and then the actions... I get two of them, and both of them must be used uh, for offensives against the Caucasus. So, all right. So, we have the Caucasus and the Sinai. So, the Caucasus advances one, and the Sinai attempts same rules as before. So, to be able to advance there, we need, hopefully, a three or higher. Try and change things up a little. There we go. They do not advance. Awesome. There we go. So, we have the Caucasus. Well, we need to roll a three or higher. We have two actions in which to do so, and they both must be taken for the Caucasus. So I need a three or higher in which to push them back. That's a fail. We'll do it again. That's a success. We push them back. Good deal. Uh, if you guys will give me just a moment. All right, cool. Um, so that's it. And again, national will not affected out here. So we go to the next card. We have second battle of Ypres. All right. So we're going to be uh, conducting the the Western theater battle. Well, I'm glad I got a uh, plus plus one over there. So that's going to be helpful. We'll get there. Then uh, the caucus and the Sinai attempt to advance. We get one action. So in November 1914, German armies clash with the French and British forces at Ypres, a small Belgian town. In April 1915, the Germans launched an offensive regaining the high ground second. Uh, I'm sorry, gaining the high ground east of the town. The battle was distinguished by the first major use of poison gas. In the third offensive in 1970, also known as that uh, armies clashed with half a million casualties for all sides. The numbers in this are just staggering on that. All right, so we have our first battle. So what we're going to do is we will make sure that I'm not, that I do this right. So, so these are off map battles. So we have the second battle of Ypres here. So that is going to take place, all right? Uh, lost my place a moment. There we go. To resolve an off-map battle, roll a die and modify the result as follows. For each resource in here, I get a plus one. So I get plus one on my roll. There's no war weariness. That chit is not out on the board yet. Hopefully it's a while. So then we compare the modified result. If it's, so if it's less than that number, so I start with a plus one. If it's less than that number, it goes into the defeat box. If it's a four modified, it goes there. If it's five or higher, it goes there. So we want a roll of four or higher. Hey, hey, it's an automatic victory. There we go. Boom. Go us. Yay. All right. Now, the good news is these do not get spent right now. Now, I can, if I wish, use these, uh, get rid of them, uh, to be able to give, 
uh, permanently get rid of them later on, but I wish to not do that. So that is the battle. Then the Caucasus advance again, and the Sinai attempt to advance. And here, need a four or higher for them. I'm sorry. It is a three or higher for them not to advance. They advance. <sighs> well, the flanking attack isn't coming into play because the, uh, the Arab front isn't even on there. All right, that is, that is not good. So we have one action, and now we have three here banging on our door. We're going to go ahead and try and push Murray back with our one point here. Um, yeah, we're going to try and push him back, but to push him back, we need, uh, we need a four or higher. We are not rolling well. This might be a quick game, guys. Whew. All right, so we failed. We go on to the next card. All right, so we have the Gallipoli landings. Place the Hamilton Gallipoli unit on its on the four space uh, on its four space and the destroyed Sitabahir gun emplacement marker in the Narrows. All right, I'll get to that in a minute. The Arab, they're not on there. The Caucasus advanced. That's not good either. And I get two actions. So hoping to break the stalemate in the war and knock the Ottoman Empire out quickly, which is going well for them. Young British First Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, conceived of a dynamic invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula. On April 25th, 1915, the landings began, but incompetence coupled with the resolute efforts of the Turkish defenders bogged down the campaign for many months. All right, so place the Hamilton Gallipoli marker out there. So let me grab that. So Hamilton... And this goes out on Gallipoli, and it shows it goes onto that. So now that is another front that just got opened up. And the set of Bahir gun emplacement one, I think I had it down here, it is. Uh, all right. So that goes away. That's not good for us. We don't like that. All right. Now the Arabs, they're not out there yet. The Caucasus do advance. That's going to cause that to drop if I don't push it back. So I guess we're going to have to uh, try and push uh, Dashkov back. So we're going to... Sp uh, but... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to. So we'll spend one action doing that. We need to roll a three or higher in which to do so. That's an automatic. Go home. And you know what? Let's go ahead and try and push Murray back with the second action. Need a four or higher. Automatic. Goes back. Good. Good job, Turks. All right. Hey, Wolf. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the third in the series. All right. So, because we have pushed them back out of those spaces, we don't have to worry about that. So, national will stays where it is. All right. So, we have Ghadar conspiracy. Early in the war, the Germans attempted uh, to uh, foment revolution in British, British India, working with radical nationalists in the country. The Ghadar Party in North America and the Indian Independence Committee in Germany, a plot for a large-scale mutiny of Indian troops in February 1915 was launched. The plan failed miserably as British intelligence had successfully infiltrated it. So we're going to have our first coup attempt in India, and then we advance all of those, but as we know, the Arabs are not on the board yet, yet both of those will, and we have two actions as well. So we have our first coup, so let's go ahead. Coups are easy enough. To resolve a coup, we're going to roll the die, and then because we have this here in Turkey, we get a plus one on all of these, all right? Um, so we need to roll higher than the number. So in other words, we need to roll a five or a six because the coup in India says it's a five. So we have... 
coup in India. That will go there. If we fail, nothing happens. However, if, uh, if we succeed, we get to put it in the victories box, which is good for us. Victory points, right? So we need to roll a five or a six to succeed. We're, I'm only counting stuff that's in the, there, so we're going to try this again. That works both ways. All right, we failed. So this is out of play. We'll just put it off over there. Boo. All right, now Arabs advance. They do not. Gallipoli advances. There we go. And then the Caucasus advance. And we have two actions. And I feel like we should be doing something over in the Narrows, but all of this is so disconcerting right now that... I think we go ahead and try and push Dashkov back again. So need a, uh, to be able to move him back, we need a three or higher. That works. Um, and we have one point left. Why don't we go ahead and do that again? Yeah, failed. All right. Well, there's that. But we got him back off of the national will impact, uh, so, National Will stays where it is, and we go to a new event, or a new card. Armenian Volunteer Units. Armenian Volunteer Units served in the Russian and British armies during the First World War. The origin of these units varied from Armenians who escaped the Ottomans to Armenians who lived in areas under Tsarist control. Harsh treatment of Armenians within the empire led many to resistance, which was used as an excuse for the genocide that follows. So no event, Arab, Caucus, Sinai, and two actions. All right, no Arabs still. Caucus advances again. This dude is a serious thorn in my side. And the Sinai attempts to advance. He, we need a three or higher, and he doesn't. He does. Oh, this is frustrating. So we have two actions. And at some point, the mid is going to come into play here. Uh, well, hmm. let me look something up real quick. So how many of you guys out there have played this before? There it is. That's the rule I'm looking for. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to spend one of them to try and push Dashkov back. Would we roll a five? Good. We have one more. Let's go ahead and do it again. There we go. It gets them off my board, and now I feel like we can actually do something a little bit. Um, I suppose I could. Yeah, so be it. All right. Wow. Wolf says he has over a thousand bagged war games from back in the day when war game magazines were cheap enough to take out of his subscri subscription. I hope the game was worthwhile. Mostly they weren't. Hey, Yoda. <laughs> Giovanni. Spoken like a war gamer. I don't play games. I only buy them. Yeah. Um, not quite sure what happened with the compressor today. Nothing. All right. So, moving on to the next event. Grand Duke Nicholas takes control. September 1915, Grand Duke Nicholas, the grandson of Tsar Nicholas I, who had been removed as commander-in-chief on the Eastern Front, took the helm of the caucus operations. While his able subordinate, Nikolai Yudnich, was nominally in charge, Grand Duke Nicholas ran strategic affairs until the provi provisional government took over Russia in February 1918. So if it's on the map, Replace the caucus front with its Grand Duke N Nicholas unit, uh, showing the same flag that it currently shows. Then everything's going to advance it. 
in three actions. So Grand Duke Nicholas, that is here. So unfortunately, yeah, I would like it to go onto that side, but I'm glad I pushed it back when I did. That's going to go and that's going to come off. All right. Then Mesopotamia is going to advance. That's bad news. Gallipoli is going to advance. That's bad news. And uh, the Salonika front isn't on there. All right. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to try something real quick, guys. Also, um, I'm going to mute the audio too to do this. So give me just a second, okay? If that changed anything, let me know if it did for the, uh, for the audio, guys. All right. Okay. So everything's advanced. We get three actions, and we got a whole lot of problems out here. Uh, all right. So I'm okay with the caucus front being where it is, but I feel like these two need to get back, and we have a total of three actions. So the other thing is I know I need to get more DRM uh, help, uh, markers into the off-map theaters. I know that's going to be important as the game advances. And the, the, the problem is those take two actions each in which to do so. No. Nope. Oh, well. It's going to have to stay for, like that for the rest of today, guys. Sorry about that. I think I might have bumped something. I'll take a look afterwards. Uh, so we're going to try and push Hamilton back. We need a three or higher. That works. So there's that. I think we have to try and push uh, Townsend back as well. So we need a four or higher. All right. Uh, this, was, this was a good choice. Now the other question is, do we try and push Murray or do we try and push Townsend back? And yes, I realize I'm neglecting the Narrows, but I have a good feeling about that. All right. Um... Let's try and push Murray back. Need a four or higher. There we go. Murray goes back. That was good use of the three uh, actions. Succeeded in all of them. We now have no effect on our national will, so we go to the next card. And good thing, here we go. Shuffle the midday cards into the deck. So, Jihad declared on November 14, 1914, on behalf of the Sultan, the religious leaders, Sheikh Ul Islam, declared jihad or holy war urging all muslims including those in allied countries to take up arms the appeal had a limited effect in muslim lands under british rule sheikh hassan sheikh hussein ibn ali the emir of mecca refused to endorse jihad saying that it was incompatible with an aggressive war so shuffle the midday cards so first things first that entire deck of cards, as you guys can see, is going to then get shuffled into the remaining cards here. So we're going to uh, do a quick little shuffle here. Actually, I'm going to deal them out a little bit and kind of shuffle them up that way. That way they're a little bit more dispersed. All right, there, I just cut them, so hopefully that works out. So those are now shuffled in, so you can see that is two-thirds of the cards remaining in the game. So we advance the Caucasus, Mesopotamia, and Sinai, but I get three actions and plus one to all offensives. That's kind of nice. All right, so the Caucasus advance one, Mesopotamia advances one, and the Sinai attempts we need a three or higher for that to fail. That failed. So at least 
there's that. So we have three actions now, and I get a plus one on all of my offensives. So we're going to start with spending one here on Townsend. So we need a three or higher. Yeah. Mm, and now that those are in, against my better judgment, probably, I'm going to spend two actions to bring... One, into the Eastern Theater. We have a lot of battles coming for those. Um, oh, here, let me, uh, you guys can't see that, so hold on. So all of these green counters up here are other ones. So being able to have that, uh, have that influence, they think, is going to, be, uh, going to be important. So that's why we put it there. So that's my three actions. One was wasted because we failed, but it is what it is. Um... Or do we? Because we got the plus one. Okay, fine, we won't. We have two more. Let's do it again. Townsend, we need a three or higher. All right, automatic win. Do we push him back again? Or do we go with him? I, you know what? I make a case for both of those. And... I think we do the caucuses. Let's try that. Let's... Uh, Grand Duke Nicholas, we need a three or higher to push it. Oof. All right, never mind. Good thing we did that plus one, huh? Oof. All right, so here we go. Oh, we have our first midday card that came up. Oh, sorry about that, guys. There we go. So we have uh, Wasmus in Persia. In February 1915, Wilhelm Wasmus was dispatched in an attempt to cause Iran to enter into an alliance with the Central Powers. The attempt, while showing initial promise, turned into a complete fiasco. While Wasmus succeeded in causing some southern tribes to revolt, he also lost the German code book, which fell into British hands. I think the phrase is, whoops. So we have a coup in Persia. The Caucasus advance, Gallipoli advances, and we have two actions. So we have a coup in Persia. Let's hope this one goes better than the last one went. So we have a plus one, so we need a five or a six on this. Wow. Not good. If you guys have watched any of my other solo streams, I tend to roll well. Apparently I'm making up for it today. So the caucuses advance. Get back, Nicholas. And uh, Gallipoli advances as well. And we have two actions. This sucks. Um, get, get him back. So we need a three or higher. I'm sorry, we need a four or higher. Okay, good. And Gallipoli, need a three or higher. <sighs> All right, well, we have our first national will um, effect. So because they are on one of those markers, we add all that up. Minus any defeats. And make sure they're not offset by victories. A moment. Defeats and strategic sites. That's it. Ugh. So we're at minus one. If we ever get to minus four or higher, we automatically lose as well. Obviously, I need to roll better. All right. There we go. Next card. Seriously, right? That's a terrible die. All right, so we got one of the early, one of the three, I think, remaining ones that were there. So we have a uh, Sanusi revolt in November 1915. Ahmed Sharif, as Sanusi, the head of a religious sect of tribesmen in Libya, was encouraged to attack the British in Egypt. After seizing a few oases, oasi, hmm. uh, British forces with South Africa. Uh, British forces with South, South African aid expelled the Senussi from Egypt permanently by February 1917. So, hey, the Sinai retreat. Yay! All right. Nice to see him go back the other way. Mesopotamian Gallip, Gallip, Gallipoli. Whew. And two actions. So, Sinai, go back. All the way back to the Suez. There's a, one we don't have to worry about. But don't worry, the Mesopotamia and Gallipoli... Um, or huge problems. So we have two actions. This has got to happen or else we could potentially lose in the next round. We need a three or higher. There's one. We'll do it again. Yeah. 
three or higher. There we go. So at least push them back a little bit. Really don't feel good about this, but is what it is. So we're, we pushed them back, so that's awesome, but they're still at covering that, so we stay at minus one. At least they're not additive, right? Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. German U-boats in the Mediterranean. Yay! All right. So on April 25th, 1915, finally we got some good news here. The same day as the Gallipoli landings, the German government dispatched U-boat 21 under the command of Lieutenant Commander Otto Hersing. After clearing the Straits of Gibraltar and stopping in the Austrian port of Kataro, the submarine made its presence felt in the Mediterranean. On May 25th, U-21 sunk the British battleship Triumph. Place the U-boat marker in the Narrows area. If forcing the Narrows has not yet occurred, that event does not take place. Woohoo! The Caucasus and the Sinai both advance, but we get two actions and plus one DRM on both of those, but obviously it's only the Gallipoli one that matters because the Salonica are not in play. But this is good news. The Straits are closed. This isn't, this part of the game isn't even going to happen. All right, that is awesome. I'm sorry for you guys not being able to see it, but that's one of the ways we can lose. Woo! Don't need to worry about that, and I'm glad I didn't waste any actions on that. All right, so the Caucasus, those advance. That's, that's less than good, though. And the Sinai advance. Oh, they attempt to advance. So they need to roll a three or higher to fail. They fail. They do not advance. So now we have two actions. <sighs> we get a plus one on that one which all but is a likely outcome that that would succeed, but these are the bigger problems. Um, let me look something up real quick. And I misspoke earlier. If I remove any of the markers that I have out here, which right now is just one, it gives me one extra action. Uh, you know what? A moment real quick. Yeah. Okay, so we have two actions. I feel like we're, you know what? I, this may come back to bite me, but there's so many battles coming in here. I'm willing to, ooh, I'm willing to try that for one round. That's it. At least that's done, and now I can just focus on pushing these back. Let's see how it goes. So that's going to push that down to negative 2 or minus 2, and there we go. All right. We have Arab Revolt. Sometime around June 8th, my birthday, 1916, the French and British made an alliance with Grand Sharif Hassan to initiate an Arab Revolt in return for promises of post-war sovereignty. After some initial victories in the Hejaz in October 1916, the campaign bogged down as if it was unable, as it was unable to capture uh, Medina or influence the primary theaters of fighting. So, place the Faisal Hussein Arab unit on the sixth base on its track. That's another one we now have to mess with. And Mesopotamia and the Sinai both advance, and we get two actions. Okay, so. This at least goes on to the two side and comes down there. Mesopotamia advances one. Well, we know what our focus is this, this turn. And the Sinai attempts to a three or higher and they fail. They fail. Stay back, Murray. Two actions. It's got to be for this. Got to be for four or higher. Come on. 
All right, there's one. We're going to do it again. Nope. All right, let's not get greedy, I guess. Oof. All right, so now we're still at minus two for there and there. That's done. Next card. Oh, this is not good. Udenich named commander in chief. Although Grand Duke Nicholas gave General Nicholas, uh, Nikolai Udenich a free hand in running the Caucasus campaign after the Russian Revolution of February 1917, Udenich was officially named as commander in chief. By May of 1917, however, he was dismissed for insubordination. He later became a powerful figure in the ensuing Russian Civil War. If in play, place the Caucasus front marker with its Udenich unit, all right, then the Arab and Mesopotamia both advance. And I get two actions. So, this is becoming a really big problem. That's now a four. Uh, all right. And Arabs advance and Mesopotamia advances. Well, two actions. It's got to be for Mesopotamia, needing a four or higher. Fail. Do it again. Success. We survived to fight another day. So, we're still at two. No other changes. That stays there. Here we go. All right. Asia Corps. After the fall of Serbia, it became possible for German troops to be dispatched directly to the Ottoman Empire. The first Germ major German relief expedition, Pasha, uh, Pasha 1, was dispatched in, the Mar in March of 1916 and sent to the Palestine Front. In April, air assets were also dispatched. In August of 17, a second expedition, Pasha 2, was dispatched. Ultimately, most German forces were decimated. Take the Asia Corps marker and discard the marker to gain plus one DRM on all offensives against a single front for one turn. Well, it looks like we're probably going to bust it out right now. I can save those if I want, but I choose not to because Mesopotamia is going to advance and I get three actions. So Mesopotamia advances. I get the Asia Corps. Here you go. Done. So I get a plus one. So now I need threes or higher on that. So on all offensives against a single front, it's going to be Mesopotamia. So three or higher. One. Nope. Two. One, two. So at least we pushed them back to cut. So there's that. And now national wheel marker will go back up one. All right. Worrisome obviously. Um, could have made a case that I should have pushed that, but the fact that they were in Mosul, um, if there was one more advance, the game was over. So I had to do that. It made sense to use the Asia Corps for that, I think. <sighs> All right, here we go. Hey, got another battle. All right, so we have the Psalm. Between July and November 1916, British and French allies launched a major offensive against the Germans on the Western Front. The campaign resulted in a massive loss of life and only translated into the conquest of six miles of German-held territory. On July 1st, 1916 alone, the British Army sustained 60,000 casualties. The campaign, however, did feature the first use of tanks. Yeah, one of the the uh, ugliest day in British history as far as losses, uh, the Somme, uh, July 1st. If you guys haven't listened to uh, um, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, uh, the stuff he did on World War I was amazing. I highly, highly recommend it. All right, so we have a battle of the Somme. So for the battle, we need... So we get a plus one. So defeat, stalemate, or victory, depending on what we roll. We need a, a three or higher to succeed. Hey, we succeeded. So we won the psalm. There's that. Cool. Then Gallipoli advances. That's not good. And Salonika. They're still not on the board, so we don't need to worry about that. We get one action. 
So here, I'll, you know what? I'm going to leave it up to you, peanut gallery. You tell me. We have one action, unmodified die roll. We can try and push Hamilton back, uh, needing a roll of three or higher to Anzac Cove, or we can, we need a five or a six to push back U Udernich, um to attempt to, to get him off of the, uh, the national will location, the strategic space. My gut says Gallipoli, go ahead and push that back. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to deal with this menace that's out here. What do you all think? Oh, hey, while we're waiting... Didn't, didn't move. There we go. Cheers, Lorraine. Thank you. I think that's how you say that, right? Yeah, Lorraine. Cheers. Welcome to the herd. Thank you for the support. Vincent? Yeah. All right, Bill, Vincent. I'm leaning that way. I think... Uh, I think going for pushing back Hamilton is probably the smarter, and hopefully we get some uh, plus ones, plus twos out there to be able to push him back. Okay, we are unanimous. Here we go. So rolling it, and we succeeded. Good job. Awesome. So that stays at minus one because of Udenich up there. All right, that works out. Next action. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going heavy on the uh, heavy on the battles now. Some comes uh, some of the biggest battles in World War One. Verdun. Here we go. Uh, German commander Eric von uh, Falkenhayn launched a major offensive on the Western Front in February 1916 with the aim of capturing the historic city of Verdun and bleeding the French white. On February 21st, the Germans began with a 10-hour bombardment, launching over a million shells. The battle also saw the first use of flamethrowers. Stop and think about that for a second. A million artillery shells. A million anything is a lot, but to have a million artillery shells launched in 10 hours, it's literally incomprehensible. I cannot fathom how horrible that must have been to be at the Battle of Verdun. Literally hell on earth. And also, Dan Carlin's uh, uh, episode that featured the Battle of Verdun was, yeah, it's just, I whew, can't fathom it, cannot. So the Battle of Verdun, here we go. So again, we need a four or higher, since our, we have our plus one there. Four or higher, come on. We uh, colossally failed, defeated at the Battle of Verdun. Well, we now have a problem. Caucasus advance Mesopotamia advances to Baghdad. And we have one action. Well, here's the problem. We now have one, two, three will checks. If we fail this, we're going to be at minus three. So if we get to the end of next round and they make it all the way there. And let me double check if we lose immediately when they move in or at the end of a round. A moment. Yep. Instantly. All right. Yeah. A whole lot of ruptured eardrums. Um, all right, well, here we go. We need a five or a six, uh, or else this is going to be really, really bad for us. That's yeah, really, really bad for us. Okay, so we are at minus one, minus two, minus three. Well, I mean, appropriately, Verdun was horrible, so it kind of makes sense, right? Oh. <sighs> All right, here we go. Pr 
provisional government takes control. The February Revolution occurred on March. Uh, that's funny, right? February Revolution occurred on March 8th through the 12th, 1917. The Russians used a different calendar and resulted in the fall of the Tsar of Russia and the installation of the provisional government, initially headed by Prince Lvov, Prince Vav, but by the summer, led by a young lawyer by the name of Alexander Kerneski. The provincial governor, governor, government chose to honor Russians' obligations to the Western Allies. If the caucus unit is on the map, retreat at one space. Ha! 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 And if it is not, return it to the car space. Either way, flip it to its reduced side. Ah! Oh, whoo! All right, retreat at one space and remove it down one. Ah! Ha 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 ha! Whoo! All right. So, Gallipoli advances one. Salonica and the Sinai attempt. So, we need a three or higher to fail. And we got a two. So, there we go. But, hey, if nothing happens, we survive. Well, you know what? Let's, let's keep trying to push them back. We got two actions. Let's go ahead and, yeah, so we need, uh, we need a four or higher. Uh, another four or higher. There we go. Hey, hey. Hey, there we go. Whew. That was close. All right. So we're now at minus one, minus two. Oh, wait. And the defeat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I think we lost already, didn't we? We actually lost last round. Because before that happened, because of, yeah. So this is where we were at the end of last round, right? We had one, two, three. But we also lost Verdun, which actually pushed it to minus four. So we actually won. Or we actually lost last round. Oh boy. So the provisional government never took control. Well, shoot. Glory to Rome. So thought we were saved, but in actuality, we were saved a day late. Well, that sucked. Ah, yeah, I forgot that the national will add the number of markers in the... Oh, check that. Back up. Back up. Back up. I'm doing this wrong. I apologize, guys. During this phase, you must calculate the current Turkish national will and adjust the national will marker to reflect its current value. So, I've, I've, every time I've done this, I've done this wrong. I apologize. Procedure. Add the number of markers in the victory box. From that value, subtract the number of markers in the defeats and number of strategic sites. So, not so fast, my friend. So, let's reset this. We are at 2 minus 1. Two, three, four. Two minus four is it minus two. Then we actually take the card. There, we actually push that all the way back. Gallipoli actually advanced one. Um, should be there. Oh, wait, no. That goes back one. Gallipoli advances, the Sinai advance. There we go. All right. All right. So now we have two actions. So we currently are at minus one, two, three, four, plus two. So we're at minus two right now if nothing else happens. But now nah, I'm not going to retract the glory to Rome because that was horrible. So hold on. All right. So we have two actions.
Keep pushing them back. We need a four higher. Or did we do that? We did that already, didn't we? We did. And we did both of those and we pushed them back to there, right? So we're actually at minus one, minus two, minus three. We're at minus one. So there. All right. Easy enough. Okay. So we're good. Moving on to the next card. I apologize. Jumped the gun a little bit there, guys. Savla Landing. Determined to breathe new life into the Gallipoli Offensive, in August 1915, additional British forces were landed at uh, Suvla Bay. Sir Frederick Stopford, a poor general, <laughs> was chosen for the landing and doomed the success of the venture when he delayed his advance until artillery could be brought ashore. This lethargy led to the defeat of the attempted breakout at Anzac Cove. If it's on the map, and it is, Flip the Gallipoli unit to its Gallipoli post Sabla. Uh, that sucks. And then everybody and their mother advances and we get two actions. All right. So that flips over. That gets harder. Caucus says advance one. Gallipoli advances one or attempts to. They need a... All right. They fail. Uh, I'm sorry. Gallipoli advances one. Sorry. And the Sinai attempted and failed. There we go. All right, so we have two actions. Well, we got to push Hamilton back, so we need a four or higher. We're going to push him again. That was not good. All right, so we're at minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, two. We're at minus two. If the Gallipoli front advances, we're in trouble. We survive. All right. Hey, forcing the narrows doesn't happen because the U-boats. Thank you. The Gallipoli campaign was originally conceived as a purely, purely na naval operation. The naval fleet would penetrate the Bosphorus defenses and seize Constantinople on, a, on March 18th, 1915. An allied fleet entered the narrows in hopes of effecting the seizure of the Turkish capital by sea. Because of some well-placed mines, the fleet began to suffer significant losses and retired. But that never happened, so we can just completely ignore it. So the Arabs and the Caucasus both advance. So the Arabs and the Caucasus both advance. And we have two actions. Well, we're going to go ahead and push. The Caucasus have to go back. For sure. Yeah, so we're gonna start there. Need a four or higher. Nope. Do it again. Nope. Oh boy. question is, do we start getting rid of these? Because if I, I think we have to. I'm going to remove this one from the game. And by doing so, let's see. Gain one additional reserve action from permanently removing from play one of the resource markers. So there we go. Yep, we're going to do it again. We need a four or higher. There we go. Whew. All right. So we're at one, two. Question is, do we remove the... I think we roll the dice on it. I think we have to because getting rid of this, there's so many battles that are going to happen. Plus, when the... Uh, when the Kaiser Schlott comes in, we're going to need that. But desperate times, right? Nope, we're going to roll the dice. All right, here we go. Phew. Gorlais Tarnov, or Tarnow. In May 1915, a combined Austro- a German offensive was launched against the Russian Empire, seeking to reclaim the lost territories in Galicia. 
The Central Powers breakthrough led to a substantial loss of Russian-controlled territory and the capture of an estimated 140,000 prisoners. Some of these numbers are just ridiculous. All right, so we have a Eastern Theater uh, battle, which we will go ahead and grab that and put that over there. All right, then the Caucasus, the Sinai, and three actions. Whoo, we needed that. So here we go. We need to roll a three or higher. No adjusted DRMs on this. A one. Are you kidding me? Really? Really? <sighs> Caucasus advance. The Sinai attempts to advance. Three or higher stops them. It stopped. All right. Hey, Laura. All right, we have three actions, guys. Let's push Hamilton back four or higher. There we go. You know what? Let's go ahead and try and push Udenich back four or higher. There we go. And let's go ahead and try and push Udenich back again. There we go. Well, that's helpful. All right. Well, at least we made use of the three actions, right? So we're at minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, plus two. We stay at two. All right. Next one. Battle of Jutland. This is not going to be uh, not going to be good for us. I have a feeling. Gallipoli, Mesopotamia, Salonika, all advance. German policy for many years before the Great War was to uh, build and maintain a threat fleet that could be, hamper British naval hegemony. The problem with the policy was, in order to maintain the threat, the Germans were reticent to deploy their fleet. On May 31st, 1916, the Germans overcame their inertia and engaged in battle with the British off the coast of Denmark. And the uh, largest battle, uh, sea battle of all time, I believe it was, right? Battle of Jutland? Check it out on YouTube. There's some really good videos on this, by the way. Hey, Bernardo. Um, all right. Hey, pal. All right. So we have a naval battle. So we have Jutland and then everything else happening. So, so we need a six or at least a five puts it into a stalemate. I'm not greedy. I just don't want her to be a colossal defeat. Hey, hey! All right. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Gallipoli advances. That's less good, but that's, we, can, we can deal with that. Mesopotamia, that also is less good. And Salonika still aren't out there. But we have two actions. Hmm. I think we... I think we need to push uh, push Townsend back. Need a four or higher. There we go. And then we're going to try and push Hamilton back four or higher. Nope. All right. So we are currently at one, two, three, four, or minus one. However, this is worrisome. Okay, here we go. Wow. Speaking of the Brusilov Offensive, here we go. On June 4th, 1916, the reeling Russian Empire launched a major offensive against Austro-Hungary Austro -Hung in the Ukraine under the able leadership of the Tsar's best general, Alexei Brusilov. Alexei Brusilov. The assault broke the back of the Austro-Hungarian army, which was only saved from collapse by the transfer of German troops from the other theaters. It represented a high point of Russian fortunes. So, we have that battle, and we don't advance, but we only get one action. So, here we go. Un unmodified. Oh, yeah, come on! What is it with the Eastern Front? Oh, that's now a wash. The victories and defeats. Now it's just the flags out here that matter. All right, Salonika still doesn't. We're going to try and push back Hamilton. We need a four or higher. Oh, he, 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 he. not good. All right. Well, 
That's not good. Sinai Pipeline. British operations into the Sinai were continually hampered by difficulties with transport and supply. In 1916, the British made considerable efforts to construct a rail line and water pipeline to facilitate an advance into Palestine. After building up supplies for an offensive at the end of the year, on January 8, 1917, British forces succeeded in capturing the Gazan town of Rufa. All right. Shuffle the dust deck into the deck. Place the Faisal Hussein... Uh, on its sixth track, if not yet in play, and then place the pipeline complete marker in its Sinai holding box. However, none of that matters. Why doesn't it matter, you might ask? Well, because the first move, Gallipoli advances, and now the game ends. Well, hey, at least technically, before that happened, these got shuffled in to that. So that was that's what we had to withstand the rest of the game, all of those, to have actually made it to an actual victory. So we lost. However, now we score it up. So it's an instant defeat. Uh, no, uh, right, so capturing Constantinople. If an ally friend advances into Constantinople, the Ottomans drop out of the war and seek terms. Determine the level of defeat by adding together all of the still unrevealed cards, and even those not yet added to the deck, but we've added them, and then subtracting the current Turkish national will, uh, remembering to add an eight right. Finally, compared to the... Okay, so here we go. So we're going to... Hey... We got through all those, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 24, that's, that's not good. Um, so 24, and the national will is at minus two, so that's at 26, um, well, 26, strategic defeat. All right. So there's that. Okay. So in the game, though, however, before we, we, we go on to the uh, strategic, let's see, uh, strategic defeat, per the, uh, the designer, says the Ottoman Empire surrenders in November 1918, but still manages to avoid Allied occupation. Reduced to its core territories in Asia Minor, the Sultanate removes the young Turk leadership and Mustafa Kemal. I totally forget. Well, it wouldn't have come in. Oh. And Mustafa Kemal is executed after an abortive uprising. So the one thing I forgot, I mentioned at the beginning that... Uh, we were actually going to use these as one of the uh, little variants, okay? So I forgot about that. So had we used these, like I said we were going to, you'll see on the back it says Gallipoli only until they're evacuated, then Sinai and the Arab. Oh, you mean the area where we lost? I would have gotten plus ones. Eh, but the good news is it's one of the, uh, one of the optional rules. So I said we were going to play with it, then I forgot it, so we didn't play with it. All right, no harm, no foul. So there you go. That is, uh, that's Ottoman Sunset. So let's, let's see, my thoughts on this are, I think I like Habsburg Eclipse a little bit better because there are more things to juggle in that game. And even though the pressure is instantaneous, it feels like, in both of the games, um, I feel like there's a little bit more to juggle in that one. But if you're looking for something a little bit more simplified and something that you can take with you on the road, like if you're going on a business trip, you're going to be in a hotel room or to play on the small little hotel tables or a desk there, this is actually really good for that. And speaking of which, let me show you guys this. So in the version that I have, it's actually puzzle pieces, as you can see here. So all of this comes apart. There. And actually goes into the box, right? There you go. Okay. Or you have the little paper map as well, if you don't want to mess with the puzzle board. So there you go. 
They're identical to the best of my knowledge there. And you'll also notice that the Baghdad Railway up here, this actually would hook up to the Habsburg Eclipse board. Uh, this is half the box, the other is on that one. And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is just how small this is, the actual box. You see the slip cover behind me there, but the, the box is actually really, really small. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, I, say, I keep saying Habsburg Eclipse. I, I mean uh, Cruel Necessity. I apologize, guys. Um, it hooks up with the Habsburg Eclipse, but uh, Cruel Necessity is the game that I was talking about earlier um, That I when, I when I referenced that which one I like better. I like the different tracks that are in there. It's not just beating back the armies, but it's the uh, political and religious... Um, tracks that you have to manage as well. I like the added choice and the added layer of decisions that are in that game. But I enjoyed this. I rolled like crap. It happens. And I actually got pretty lucky, the fact that the Germans came out, the U-boats, and I didn't have to really mess with the Narrows. Um, so keep in mind, I didn't spend a single action down uh, putting any reinforcements down in the narrows, um, betting on the 50% chance that my card comes out before the British try to run it. And I still failed pretty badly. So there's that. But had I played with the variants of using uh, Mustafa Kemal, then that would have definitely made it a lot easier uh, to hold back the uh, Gallipoli forces a little bit better. Um, I like that you can play it one of two ways. You can either just shuffle up the cards like how I did, or you can play historically and play them one through, you know, in order. Uh, I like that as an option. Obviously, if you played it a lot, you would know what was coming and how to prepare for that, whereas here you cannot. Um, I haven't played Dawn of the Zeds, Bernardo. Um, I, that, I need to get a copy of it, and if I do, then that's one that I would like to see. It's, it's fighting back Zambies, so there's that. Wolf says, proper war games have paper maps. I know, but I thought it would show better for the stream. Uh, Tails says, totally not my kind of game. It's definitely a dice fest. I mean, you've got to get lucky, um, and, and, or at least not unlucky. To, to do well. But historically, the Ottomans did lose, right? They were on the central power side. So, things are stacked against you anyway. All right, Wolf says, uh, uh, Zed's has much, many more decisions and more bits, and uh, Zulu's on the Ramparts is my favorite. That's another that I actually need to get a copy of, and you guys will see them. Um, I mean, the, the old school Victory Point games, um, back before they were taken over, emerged, whatever the right words are, um, yeah, there's a lot of good games in this uh, in this series that I've heard good things about and I want to get copies of. I just haven't yet. And exactly, Michael says the the flavor text is great in these. It gives it gives context, right? Uh, like Verdun, a million shells, a million. I, yeah, just oof. Um, okay, cool. And Scott says I'd never seen the size of the box before, so that was shocking. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Now, Cruel Necessity is a larger box. So getting back to this. So Cruel Necessity is about twice. It, it's, it's, it's still, you know, not really thick, um, but about yay tall. You know, it's about twice as normal size, whatever. Um, but this guy, this is a little one, real tiny little, little box here. So really nice for, uh, travel. And honestly, um, I'll, I'll show you guys this. So if you wanted the paper map, get all of those out of there. And I'm going to get all the chits in here so you guys can see. There's the map. The rule book. Okay. And all the cards. You can easily put that into a gallon-sized freezer bag. And that takes up no space in whatever you're traveling in. So this is an easy game to take on the road with you. Oh, and the die. There you go. There you go. So, all right. Um, let's see. 
Daniel, plans for a playthrough of Hannibal, Car uh, Rome versus Carthage. Absolutely. Um, once, uh, once I'm back from uh, Origins uh, next week, I don't have a whole lot of travel between now and the fall. Uh, Gen Con's a big maybe. We'll see. Uh, I have one trip going to um, Grand Rapids, Michigan for Grand Con, and then Essen, obviously, is the big one. Be going a couple weeks for that one. But outside of that, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a whole lot of live streams. Uh, the podcast content's going to be coming back and the whole nine yards. So, yeah, Hannibal is definitely on the short list of games in which to stream. Chip says, hadn't seen this before. I like the look of it and the historical info. Thanks for streaming it. So, um, Bernardo, kudos again. Thanks for a good playthrough. I enjoy the solo games you publish. Glad to be a patron, CMBGG. All right, I appreciate it. So there you go. That is Ottoman Sunset. I enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's a fun little dice chucker. Um, but to me, and I've said this in numerous times before, that if you're interested in history, I think war games are exceedingly good at both interesting or make it, getting you interested in a time period that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and may or may not have a inclination towards already, and vice versa. If you're interested in history, learning about the history and then coming to the war games to be able to see the decisions that some of the people had to make in the and being somewhat abstracted, obvious or grossly abstracted, I realize, but be, seeing the decision space in which they had to operate makes it. Uh, makes for really bringing history home. And that's why I really enjoy these uh, historical war games. Um, for instance, uh, I mentioned Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, his uh, series on World War I. I had zero interest in World War I. And then I listened to that. And then I was excited to dig into games like Pass of Glory, stuff like this, etc. And then the, another one, um, uh, Mike Duncan's Revolutions. He did a one on the English Civil Wars. I had zero interest in that. And then listening to that got me interested in trying games like Unhappy King Charles, which was really, and, and now all the counters and all the, the leaders in this game, now, I, now it gives me context in which I'm playing the game and vice versa. If I'm interested in a game, I play the game and then can get, try and read a book or whatever um, on the history. So even if you're not interested in the dice chucking or the war game aspect of it, if you're interested in history, I think there's a lot here to, uh, to get interested in and it helps uh, feed your appetite for knowledge in both directions from the historical standpoint into gaming and gaming into the historical standpoint. And I can't say enough about uh, what these war games do. I really, really thoroughly enjoy them. If for nothing else for that aspect, but I also really enjoy him as well. Uh, Nemo's War will be coming as well. Um, yeah, there you go. Cool. All right. So there you go. That is Ottoman Sunset. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. If you guys liked it, like and subscribe down below. Support the show over on PledgeHC.com. We're trying to upgrade our camera to a uh, 4K uh, PTZ camera, get to 800 patrons. We're going to be doing that. Plus you get a whole bunch of perks. Uh, Slack channel, you get swag, you get merch, you get all kinds of bonus and bonus content that isn't open for the rest of the public. So there is that. So if you want to support the show, check it out over on pledgehc.com. With that, I'm out. I leave tomorrow morning for Origins. I fly back Sunday morning. So I will be back in time for the weekly look ahead at 2 p.m. on Sunday. Then after that, we're going to be get back to publishing the podcast, as I mentioned. And it's a bulls of the wall from that point forward. So thanks, everybody. I enjoyed it. Hopefully you all did. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And I'll see you guys after Origins. Take care, everybody.